what up YouTube, Topaz Yates back for another review, and this one is to that DVSN and Ty Dollar Sign, the cheers to the best memories. But before we jump into this review, first I got to give you context, first I got to let you know exactly why I feel this way going into this album, which will explain why I feel this way about the album. But if you feel as though you know everything there is to know about DVSN and Ty Dollar Sign, then feel free to skip to this point here. But who is DVSN? It's a Canadian duo signed to Drake. The singer is Daniel Daly and the producer, his name is 1985. And to be real with you, these guys are probably behind the whole certified lover boy album that's coming up, but that's my speculation. As this duo has dropped multiple projects already, but they haven't gained mainstream notoriety for them yet. The latest project was Amuse and Her Feelings, in which they came back and added four bonus tracks to it to a project that probably people recognize it more for as Amusing her feelings. But as you go back into the past and listen to a bunch of their projects, I do believe this new one is going to be more like The Morning After, where if you listen to that project, it feels more like uh, The Weeknd, like influence that they had going on back in them times. I kind of feel as though that's what we should be expecting to hear. DVSN is a group that's on the way up. Like honestly, I feel as though they are the next ones up in the commercial industry if they get the success that they are deemed deserving of but you never know with the game. But then who is Ty Dolla Sign? Everybody should know Ty Dolla Sign, the LA based singer who's a veteran to the game, been in it since 2015 with the free TC album. Over the years man he's delivered a lot of quality music but I wouldn't say that he's dropped a classic album. I will say that he's dropped good songs on every album like a good average of two per album. Lately he somewhat revolutionized the feature album with the featuring Ty Dolla Sign joint where I I actually did enjoy that one. He did it properly where most people just throw features on everything and just don't give a crap about the project. He actually made something of quality there. Which brings us to these two entities being together. And I gotta say that I'm rather excited. Not as excited for say a Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack album. But this could yield a lot of excellent music to come. Because when you look at them individually, they know music. They know quality music as you can tell through their catalogs. And when you see these entities leaning more towards hip hop with the R&B, you can tell that there's going to be some automatic chemistry because they like somewhat of the same music. And this is honestly why I'm reviewing this man because the hopes for this is really high. The quality music that they've delivered individually goes to show you that they can do it together even as neither of them are really where they need to be in the commercial industry right now in terms of notoriety. Ty Dolla Sign seems to be on the decline and DVSN seems to be on the rise. But them coming together at this point, it could help them both and I hope it does. Which brings us to the album, Cheers to the Best Memories. And the first word that came to my mind as I heard this was disappointment. See, people really underrate the importance of chemistry, as we should have learned better with the Locks vs. Dip set. These things take time to forge. And based off of this project, man, I'm not entirely sure that it would be worth the time for them to do that. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if this is a one and done. Not saying that it's a bad project per se. I'm just not thrilled by it and there's really only one to maybe two songs that I would actually consider keeping and I might feel a different way in the morning. But let's go ahead and look at these particular songs. Like, my favorite song probably out of all of them was that Can't Tell featuring YG. I definitely love the production and the whole vibe of it, even though YG is the absolute worst choice of a feature to be had on this song. Because as I've been saying for years, YG can't rap. But it is what it is as this track was all you know sexual innuendo and trash talk that individuals have with their women and i like that aspect of it because that's ultimately just floating like okay you was talking all that big stuff on the phone what you gonna do when you come see me now you see me what's good the next song i want to talk about is that somebody you don't know i like the thought process of it but i don't think these individuals have the skill set to pull this off as this song with the production and the feature is a super latin twisted type track as they're giving tales of being intimate with someone 
without actually knowing the situations and what they're going through in their life, but yet they still catch feelings. Like, interesting thought process. I like what they tried to do here, but it just didn't pan out into a good song. The next song I want to talk about is Fight Club, and I know you know that beat. It might have been on the tip of your tongue, you can't quite figure it out where it's from, but you know that beat. That beat is juvenile slow motion. If you remember, it's the same sample, they just stripped out the New Orleans bounce. And to be 100 with you, that sample really needed that. Like, it's clearly not the same without that. Well, the concept of this song is relationship arguments. Pretty much saying that my relationship has become a fight club because all we do is break up to make up and argue to have sex and then bring it back. The next song I want to talk about is Wedding Cake. Well, what this is, is clearly wedding music. See, I do parties, then I do weddings, I do all kinds of events, and I've done enough weddings to understand when you're creating music specifically for weddings. My issues with it is one, it's too close to Jamie Foxx's slow jams for my own liking, especially how he opens up with that hook. It's the same thing, but you know, Ty Dolla Sign, he does that a lot. And I feel as though that takes away from it being your music. And the second thing I didn't like about this track was it honestly feels like an interlude by the way that they pieced it together. And the last song that I want to talk about is that I believed it with Mac Miller. And this is a verse that feels like it was pulled from some other music and I feel that way because the verse wasn't 100% on point with the music and that's a typical thing that happens when DJs try to take a particular verse from somewhere and apply it to something else that wasn't specifically designed for that. As this song is more relationship arguments, but this one in fact does lead to breaking up on top of a classic sample, but overall man, I really can't say I'm impressed by any of these songs. Like, Can't Tell is the one song that I was telling you guys that I would possibly keep, but yet I'm questioning it because YG is that bad on this dude but you know this review wouldn't be complete if we didn't talk about the balls see dvsn or division reminds me of casamigos see they've been around longer than you've thought like casamigos has been around since 2013 as dvsn has dropped three albums up to this point they are both brought to you by celebrities as dvsn is brought to you by drake and casamigos is brought to you by george clooney and both of them seem to be coming into their own right now and can seemingly start to dominate out here while ty dolla sign reminds me of patron comes off as old school but hasn't been around as old as you think as Patron came out in 1989. Both Ty Dolla Sign and Patron have proven themselves through the long term with quality that they continue to put out there. But herein lies the difficult part about the bars when it comes to R&B artists. We can delve into some things like they saying, like how Ty Dolla Sign said that if you had a twin, I would still choose you. But that's where lies it becoming different. See, R&B and rap bars are completely different. They're not really as potent, you feel me? So therefore, I'm not going to delve deeply into the lyricism at all. Like, you really just need to get around the concepts and enjoy the feel of the music that they're kicking. And, I mean, they got some slick talk from here and there that you can say to a woman that will entertain their minds as well. Like, it's worthwhile for that, but that's really about it. Overall, man, I guess I put way too many expectations into this. I don't think either of them were really prepared to create something that could rival the best R&B acts and stuff that's out there, man. It's not a bad project per se, but it's not a good one either. It's not one that I'm going to continuously recommend to people or anything like that, man. But I'm not going to crap on it, so therefore I'll give this one a 6 out of 10. Go ahead, peep it just one time. <laughs>